Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, in this, uh, let's say, episode, because we have, we have decided to do this quite regularly now, um, we are going to talk about ChatGPT, uh, exactly what everyone else is talking about these days. Um, so why is everyone talking about ChatGPT, right? So we have um, our expert here, um, Kasim, who is one of the first MVPs in India in AI, if I'm not wrong, that's right. Um, uh, is that right, uh, Kasim? I think you're one of the right. first. So the first five. five. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that is in, awesome. First in the state of Maharashtra, you can say. Yeah. And oh, nice. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and I do recognize and appreciate how difficult it must be because uh, AI and chat GPT and all these uh, chatbots, they are comparatively new. Um, so there's not a lot of community material or documentation or videos, content that is online out there, right? So to create something newly, you have to like basically come, you know, come um, all prepared and just create the content yourself. So that is actually pretty remarkable. So amazing job at that, really. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, this, uh, oops. Um, so since this is a chat GPT webinar, so what I've tried to do here um, is we are going to play a game, let's say. So we are we are going to be interviewing chat GPT for the position for the fictional position of the best uh, language, um, you know, artificial language model out there, at least for now. Um, so we will be asking uh, or I have asked already asked actually. So I've asked a few questions to chat GPT. And based on what replies or responses that it gives us, we are going to just talk off of what ChatGPT and you know ChatGPT does and how it comes up with those um, answers and what are the limitations, what are the use cases for it, applications and so on, right? Um, so let's let's just get straight into it. And yes, by the way, um, do uh, feel free to interfere. So from what I see, you cannot unmute yourself. That is fine, but you can please feel free to use the chat window. Um, so we want to make this a conversational uh, discussion, so we don't want it to be a lecture. Um, so this is chat GPT, and this is the diagram, and this arrow goes from this block to that block, and this is how. That is not what we're trying to do here, right? So we're just here, um, kind of a panel, and just talking about chat GPT. So please do feel free to chime in um, and express your thought at any point. Um, Kasim, before we get started, can you very quickly um, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so welcome everyone and thank you for having me, uh, Samir and Bob, for this uh, interesting discussion on the very trending topic uh, of the day. Uh, so for a quick uh, intro, I'm Kasim Sheikh. I'm an MVP in AI. I work as a uh, lead solution architect with Capgemini. Uh, I'm an author of four books. So again, uh, it's on Azure and AI, and uh, I have my YouTube channel, uh, which is again for a learning purpose, uh, which has more than 200 plus videos on cloud and AI again. And uh, along with this, I also lead a Azure AI community named Dear Azure uh, from last three years, and uh, I'm passionate to learn uh, and share this knowledge in the same form, having webinars, in-person talks. So uh, I'm a global speaker for that uh, since I have uh, for AI again, AI and Azure. So yeah, this is the short intro. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Kasim. Um, so let's, should we just straight uh, get into it then? Yes, yes, yes. So what is ChatGPT? Now, okay, um, I am going to throw out a quick disclaimer here. Um, since we have asked some questions to ChatGPT and it has responded, some of the slides are very uh, text heavy. So I would suggest you not to um, read all the like all the responses line by line because then you would be missing out on a lot of what we are talking about, right? Um, so we will be sharing out this um, this. Uh, well, this is being recorded, so you can go back and pause and read all the responses as um, as they come. 
but again uh, yes you can very quickly go skim through it but don't like uh, read it word by word because you might miss a lot of things there um i will read out some of the questions though right because that is uh, that is what is interesting here um so since this is an interview um i started with uh, thanking with the greetings uh, welcoming chat gpt for this interview um for for the ai language model of the future right um so i asked it tell me a few words uh, tell me in few words why would like to you know why we are qualified for this um since now chat gpt has answered it um very uh, let's say traditionally or or standard in a, in a very standard um answer it has provided me uh, but we also have kasam here which i think who will be able to give us a more human answer to this question so um kasam why what is chat gpt for you <laughs> chat gpt uh, we can call it as an uh, language model a huge language model we say can we can say uh, basically developed by open ai and uh, uh, it is basically used or uh, you know uh, with an objective of creating a la natural language processing kind of task like it could be a mm -hmm. uh, language translation it could be kind of uh, question answering or uh the best use case is right now which is happening as a text summarization kind of stuff so okay uh of course like i don't want to get into more technical but it is based on uh, there is something known as transformer architecture and uh, the best part is it has been trained on the massive amount of data so that is the and it uh, you know helps in building up a contextual uh, communication or conversation with the humans so that is the best right. part where chat gpt lies in so right. a very short end scripts uh, simple <laughs> simplified is, is definition of chat gpt yeah <laughs> absolutely that is great that is great um so again we used a few words uh, people may 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 or may not have heard of um so when we say a natural language model what do we mean so basically uh, say it's in kind of you know uh, replicating how the human uh speaks like how the this is basically comes under uh, you can say a language models when it mm -hmm. comes to a natural language processing um uh, similarly if we talk about uh, the way we uh, the we humans uh, have an uh, conversation based on mm -hmm. what exactly is being spoken what exactly is been uh, the order of what is coming in what are the inputs taken in and based mm -hmm. on that inputs what should be the response what is the context behind what is being asked so that kind of uh, processing for a natural language is uh, we can summarize in a very short uh, natural language models yeah nice mm -hmm. so you you mentioned something interesting that it understands the context um and yeah. and uh, something of something in that nature is is actually being demonstrated here right so if you read through the doc, through my question there well all i'm asking it uh, is like why are you the best Uh, why is chat gpt the best ai language model right that is my base question here but i have gone ahead and wrapped it up in like a like a word sandwich there and fed it to chat gpt let's say uh, you know in the hopes of whether or not it is going to understand what i'm trying to ask i may have a thousand other words attached to it but what is my base question right and you can say that it is quite well it is understanding what the question is right um, and given by the answer it It, it like it has. Uh, would you say that for a question of this nature, it has like a fixed answer that it is saved somewhere in its database and it just outputs that, like, or does it generate it on the fly? It's it's all based on. It's not getting generated on the fly. It's uh, you know it's all based on what all inputs you are giving it. See, uh, I will I will give you a uh, very high level uh, sort of things. Uh, when it comes to architecture okay let's go right. into a bit okay. technical so it you can you'll be helpful for everyone to now build a context and what we are talking about sure okay so the chat gpt uh, has some different components like uh, you know tokenizer tokens what we call as tokens when we deal with uh, open ai so okay so uh, it is basically it has uh, token tokenizers it has something known as encoder a uh, decoder and attention mechanism so these are the four important com components when it comes to 
uh, chat GPT. Now what uh, this tokenizer does is it's uh, whatever input or whatever uh, text we uh, give as an input to the chat GPT. OK, uh, the what we say as a request, just consider in our technical terms a request uh, text which comes in this tokenizer. What it does, it breaks down that particular text into an individual words, uh, small, small chunks of words and that words can you can term is a token. OK, now. Okay. This tokens are then. Fitted into this encoder. OK, the next component. So first was tokenizer. It just. Uh, uh, break this input text into uh, a small words that is tokens and this then this is being fitted to encoder. Now what encoder does it? It processes this text and generates a, uh, a kind of hidden sets of you know, uh, represent some input meanings. Uh, mm -hmm. That represents something, some meanings in that words. OK, and then the decoder uses this hidden stuff to generate the response. Now what this attention mechanism does is it helps the models to focus on what uh, the most relevant parts of the input. I know this could be a bit complicated, but you can go through it again and again. Uh, it, it, it's recorded, right? The session is recorded, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. So if you just imagine the four components uh, in your mind right now, that is tokenizer. The input comes into the tokenizer. It just breaks. It passes to encoder. Encoder uh, just process the text and generate a, generate a series of hidden state uh, state that represent that input uh, text. That encoder is now uh, passes it to decoder to uh, generate the hidden states of that response. And then there is something known as attention mechanism, which helps the model focus on the most relevant part of whatever the input is. This is how it all uh, uh, goes in very fraction of seconds and you get a contextual response. OK, interesting, because uh, while trying to you know ask these questions to it, sometimes I've seen that it, um, it starts answering as soon as I've hit enter and sometimes it takes a little while. To understand, yeah. I guess to understand or to process what the question is and how to no, generate. No, no, that uh, I believe those that time is based on uh, the huge amount of you know the inputs which are coming in, but it will not take time to generate this uh, procedure. Like it took time for me to pass it on to the four components, but it will not take time for them uh, for the model okay. to get it done. Okay, okay, okay. So it's just like a latency, um, latency yes. thing. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. OK, nice. Good. Good to know. Thank you. Um, so that is what chat GPT is. Um, and ever since I've discovered chat GPT, I'm kind of addicted to testing all different kinds of things <laughs> with it. I'm asking all kinds of stupid questions or maybe like some tricky questions. Um, and try, I've been trying to trick it into um, giving me an emotional response or, you know, to give me something emotional or sentimental or to see whether it understands context, sarcasm, uh, emotions, and so on. It looks like it doesn't. So, Samir, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you here. Uh, I just yeah. want to, uh, you know, give a few lines on uh, what is this attention mechanism. Okay, because that, if at all, that particular technique has been understood, the entire process will be easily understood. So, uh, uh, this, you remember, I said the four components. The fourth was mm -hmm. uh, attention mechanism. So what happened is like uh, it is a technique that is again used in uh, the natural language processing, uh, which helps machine to understand the context of the sentence. So the most important stuff that is it's a context based conversation. That is where it lies like attention mechanism. That technique helps uh, the NLP, you know, to process or to understand the context of the sentence. So what it does it, it allows the machine to focus on a very specific word of whatever input which you have uh, passed it on. You know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it happens like when we are talking, we are not listening to the entire sentence, right? We listen to the main words, what exactly we need to respond. In the yeah. same manner, what this technique does is whatever input text it comes in. So rather than processing the entire sentence, it uh, uh, make machine understand a specific part of the sentences so that the response are very much in that in that particular context. So this is how that mechanism right. works. Yeah, sorry. Now we can continue. Yeah. It's no, no, a that focus mechanism as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, that was exactly 
uh, what I asked it, right? So um, in the next question, I asked it, okay, so how do you work exactly, right? So this is what the, uh, the oh, answer okay. it gave oh. me. And this is pretty much exactly what you told me, right? So this is like, uh, it, it has words like attention mechanism, self-attention and focus and positioning and coding and everything that you just said. Um, but you uh, uh, notice here that I've, I've given him, uh, well, I'm calling it him, but given it um, <laughs> an instruction that to tell uh, tell me in exactly five lines as to uh, how do you work. Um, okay. Now, what I meant here was, so you see here, so these are clearly six lines. Um, in my mind, that is six lines, right? Okay, but it is still six given- lines, four sentences. Yeah. <laughs> four sentences, six lines. So it is it, it is not five in, in either, right? So it is more <laughs> lines and less sentences. But um, I tried to trick it again. Um, so I tell it, uh, give me ex exactly five lines. Um, but it gave me six. So I said, that is not five lines. Um, so it understood what my question was, right? So I just said, that's not five lines. It didn't ask me what's not five lines, right? So he, it knows that the answer I gave previously is not five lines. Um, so again, again, it tried. Again, that is more than five. But this time what it did is it just gave me in five points, uh, which is, I guess, good enough. So, well, yeah, five so sentences this. in this case. Yeah. So this is what you're prompt. You're doing a prompt, right? In yes. technical or in what we say in terms of chat GPT open AI, this is something known as prompt the way we, uh, you know, talk with this model. So now okay. uh, this is altogether a different skill set. Now a prompt engineering, like how you okay. easily you will get the response or how easy or how uh, what will be the best way to frame your sentence to get the best answer from them. Right. So it's all about yeah, that... the prompt one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, again, uh, yeah. I have. Sorry, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, you have to learn how basically how to prompt JetGPT in the correct way. And also, yeah. of course, there are multiple ways of doing it and that yields yeah. you a different kind of answer. Yes, I have, it's, I have seen uh, a kind of cheat sheet for, uh, uh, you yeah. know, prompt prompt uh, for using ChatGPT. Like what, what <laughs> okay. how the way the prompt should be for asking kind of coding questions or some uh, research questions for all different categories, how the prompt should be. I've seen uh, a kind of, uh, you know, 60 pages kind of cheat sheet yeah. of this. So it was very oh, interesting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can Somewhere. go absolutely crazy with this, but you can also assign JetGPT like a role, like you've been doing some years. So you have actually now yeah. said, okay, you are coming in for an interview, right? And I'm asking you questions and then you answer like an interviewee for a job. Yeah. Um, but you can also tell it like, OK, you are now a super smart PowerShell scripter or you can say you are a, a legal advisor or you are whatever, whatever you you can assign it uh, like all kinds of prompt roles as well. And that's also I don't know how many pages of that is there. Also, <laughs> there are also cheats uh, sheets for that. So, so it's it really, is, really yeah. interesting. So it it is basically you are building a context for chat GPT, like from what uh, you know exactly you want it to answer or respond. So bring an interviewer yeah. or interviewee or uh, based on whatever you are trying to build. Yeah. Right. Yeah, cool. Again, so uh, in, in the um, ongoing slides, I have asked some questions differently uh, or I've tried asking the same question in different words and it does give different um, answers. So there must be I don't know if it's the correct way of asking questions is is the right the right thing to say, but I mean a question is a question, and whatever words you use, for the most part, ChatGPT seems to understand what what the context is, as what is what is exactly being asked. So that mm. is pretty good. That's that's impressive. Um, cool. So uh, next, talk a little bit about history of ChatGPT then, because for, for a lot of people, it just seems like uh, something that came out of the blue. Uh, nobody was chatting, talking about ChatGPT, and now everyone is talking about ChatGPT, right? So, but I'm sure that is not how it it did not like bloom in overnight. Um, there must be a lot of work that went on, you know, into creating this model, training this model, feeding the data, testing, um, you know, and and then releasing. So, what what is the history of ChatGPT? Yeah. Uh, so for this. 
the kind of history of chat gpt i will give uh, the answer best to my knowledge because i still uh, you know i'm not convinced myself that uh, whatever we have uh, whatever data or content we have available is uh, very much uh, you know true or in the sense of chat gpt because as you said building this model is not a uh, work not of easy. overnight kind yeah. of yeah okay so yeah. it has been uh, done from uh, very uh, uh, long time we can say so as of i know uh, this this program or this uh, training process for this uh, you know particular chat gpt it started in 2018 uh, I, I i'm not sure whether it is uh, the exact date so kind of disclaimer that it is just of my knowledge i am talking about uh, but yes so it is being uh, started uh, some time around 2018 with uh, 40 gb of text data okay and that model or that version was uh, known as gpt1 not is 3.5 i believe 3.5 or uh, uh, yeah 3.5 yeah. the current is gpt3.5 right so it was gpt1 and then in 2018 uh, again uh, open ai uh, released chat gpt2 that was uh, the updated version and it has uh, something around which i read was 8 uh, 7 or 8 millions of web pages okay uh, the yeah. chat gpt2 had something around the, the, the data set was uh, large as 8 million of web pages so you can imagine yeah. uh the uh, huge uh, giant data behind it uh, and of course in 2019 uh, this model or this data set again got some massive uh, uh, intakes uh, with some fine tuning with some task and you know uh, testing and all the self training sort of things again with uh, a huge 2 point uh, around uh, Uh, i don't know the exact figure but it was huge something around uh, some 570 or something 570 gb of uh, yeah. text uh, which was around uh, that is for chat gpt 3 okay and uh, yeah so this is what i know in figures which i hardly remember which i have read in some of the white papers which is being uh, you know released by open ai when uh, azure open ai and uh, this came in this uh, collaborations came in so at that time i was just going through some of the white papers and i i remember this figures and recently we had a uh, uh, i had a talk with uh, one of the another api uh, sorry A- ai of uh, uh, canada mvp mvp in ai of canada uh, his name is rahat yasir so he has also given some uh, you know uh, we were doing a pair programming sort of uh, with chat gpt to create an uh, AI, ai models using azure ai so that was the session all about and uh, during that session uh, he he gave some figures so i hardly remember that thing but this is what i know like uh, behind the scene it has been trained with massive huge data but yes we don't know what the data is we don't know how uh, whether all the data was public private we don't know whether it was uh, legalized to have those data we are not aware whether how which data they have already trained it so it's all in uh, you know black box yeah i was going to ask because um since it's been trained on all this huge amount of data mm-hmm. what data is this like who authorized this data who has verified this data is this right is this wrong um how do you even okay some things are fact based like is okay um the sun rises in the east okay anybody 2 plus 2 is 4 anyone can answer that but if you ask it like some subjective questions um it's like what do you think of um i don't know uh, donald trump so whatever answer it gives how what data it's been trained on who you know again who fed it that data and was there a data set that is prioritized over uh, another data set yeah so uh, i've read uh, you know uh, i believe last to last week uh, there was one article was published on a, our linkedin and it was a very interesting one based on again on chat gpt so see i'm not an advocate or something uh, of chat gpt i'm the same user as we all are right but when i wrote uh, i i wrote uh, read those article it was all about you know uh, that person has asked chat gpt 
which was the first book on sql which got released mm-hmm. okay and chat gpt gave a nice name with year and everything with author name and that book never exist oh wow yeah. <laughs> okay then uh, he asked like when this was released what is the reference source of you know source you are giving this so yeah. the chat gpt replied with some conference happened at so and so place and in this conference this book was uh, released kind of and that conference never happened at that place rather that place didn't exist that uh, conference <laughs> hall never exist so it had a you a long conversation wherein the user was trying to uh, figure out like at the end like no this is what you are responding is wrong and chat gpt was trying to explain no what it was responding was absolutely correct with some reference data but for the entire series right from start to end all the response which came in never exist so as i said it's in data you cannot uh, rely on it and uh, it's not something you can uh, you know uh, uh, make yourself dependent on it yes you can uh, have you can take an kind of uh, assistant or you can take a kind of mm. help from chat gpt but not you uh, relying on it fully is a big mistake Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can think of it like something or someone to like just bounce your ideas off of. Like, so you yeah. shoot it in the dark. If it gives you a good, exa- you know, good, good response, then good. Yes. If not, then I guess you have to come up with your own. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's. I think it's also linked to uh, to one of the questions uh, in the in the chat. Um, because the the point is that Chat GPT is not like a huge book library. And it quickly finds the the right book and the right quote from a book or whatever, and where it says like, okay, this is the fact, this is the statement, this is the quote or whatever. It first tokenized everything, so it it took that quote or sentence and it mm. cut it up in many pieces. And yes, it did make connections between them. So like this word fits well with that word, or you know this this is a way of forming a sentence and it's in this language and it is a formal or informal those kind of things is what what is get what gets made and when it gives you an answer it'll just pull stuff together and form a sentence which is grammatically correct and in the right language yeah. and maybe in the right style if you assign it to you know make it angry make it nice make it long make it short uh, whatever um, but it's not a copy and paste from a library or right. a Google search or whatever whatever it is, right? It's not like copy paste. So you cannot rely yeah. on it as being a quote or a fact stating mechanism. Exactly, right. exactly. And um, so here in this response, actually, so uh, again, so I tried to uh, incite it or, you know, stir it emotionally by asking, um, <laughs> Now, this is an interview because I uh, remember the last time I um, here I gave um, I, I welcomed him while well, I keep saying him welcome it um, with saying, OK, thanks for coming in this uh, for your interview and so on. And it just gave it just started with the answer. Right. It did not say hi back. Hello back. Good morning or greetings, whatever. Um, so I was a little pissed. Um, just like this is an interview, bro. Why? Why? Where are your manners? <laughs> Right. So did I ask you to sit down? No. Did you ask me to, you know, took my permission to sit down? No. Um, so, yeah, so I tried to uh, ask it, where are you manners? And uh, given by the response, you can clearly see that it it um, recognizes that it is not a human um, and it does not claim to be a human or equivalent to a human even. So it is very self-aware that it is aware that it is, I am a language model. You are not going to get um human like behavior out of me all the time so it is very clear about um what it is and what it is trying to be and what it is not trying to be even right uh, again i thought that was really interesting yeah um uh, so applications of chat gpt again so as the days are going by um, many uh, more and more applications are, you know, coming to surface. Like some softwares are now we are, uh, you know, integrated with ChatGPT, or now we natively support ChatGPT, or this or that. Um, what in your uh, custom, if you have seen any real-world examples of uh, what the actual applications of ChatGPT are, 
or what do you think the applications would be in the coming future? See, uh, in real life, for uh, example, ChatGPT is widely used, uh, you know, for uh, kind of incident management, okay, or support management kind of stuff, where uh, wherein, uh, you know, there is kind of uh, tickets are getting generated, and there is a kind of wait time between the tickets which are being requested and the response which comes in. So what uh, enterprises or business is trying to, you know, uh, uh, do in this case to minimize uh, that response time sort of or to, you know, uh, kind of present them with a proactive uh, responding, responding to the queries or request that comes in from the user or from the customer. What they are doing is like, uh, for example, you have a uh, support system, support ticket system and uh, some so there is some technical issues happen and that is being recorded as a part of ticket from some customer. For example, I'm not able to log in. I'm getting some four or four of five zero zero error or something example. So what happens is it just creates a ticket and then uh, the. Uh, the organization who are uh, you know, responsible for responding to that tickets. They read it and then they go through what the exact issue is and then they respond in the same ticket. OK, but they, this takes some time. There are some SLAs for each and every ticket based on the, you know, the uh, gender of the ticket, uh, whether it's in the whether the severity of the ticket, we can say right. what they are mm -hmm. trying to do is uh, they, they are trying to orchestrate this flow. OK, with infusing chat GPT models in between this two uh, talk like once the request comes in. Uh, Consider it you have an uh, uh, service now ticket or something. Okay, what is happening? But as soon as the ticket comes in, the entire description is being figured in a, uh, you know, framed prompt. The prompt is made in a way that you need to answer it in a uh, kind of first first aid answer for that particular issue, and it is being passed to that model. And of course, you will get a uh, response in a few seconds, and that response has been. Uh, added as a comment to that particular ticket. So what happens is I as a user, I as a customer, when I write some technical uh, uh, jargons or kind of that I'm facing 500 error or I'm not able to log in or something, something. So based on that thing, based on this thing, this chat GPT or this model, what it tries to respond, like try to clear, clear your cache, uh, just see whether are you logged in in some other system. Or uh, right. there may be some, and it it starts with a very apologizing way, right? Uh, as uh, Bob earlier said, we try to we need to build a context for Chat GPT. So it's like the prompt is in the way that you are answering a customer. So be in a humble tone, or be in a tone where you are very apologetic for this problem. And then this is the problem. So it starts with I really apologize that you are facing. I regret that you are facing this issue. That kind of stuff, right? So what happens is I as a user, I get the response within four or five seconds. So my uh, view with that particular uh, whenever see if you raise a ticket to support and if we get an immediate response, your uh, you know, uh, what do we say? Your point of view for that particular app or for that particular organization or that particular uh, support system gets more uh, in a trusted value, right? It has more trust on it. So you know yeah. the way the long they take in responding, the more it's not likely you will go back to that uh, that vendor or that supplier again, right? right? So this is one of the most widely uh, accepted uh, use case uh, which I have seen uh, in uh, many of the you know uh, not in my organization or in any other organization, but this is uh, what exactly is happening. Rather, uh, uh, there is uh, a conference right next week. Uh, uh, expert life conference and yeah. I'm talking about the same my topic on in that conference is same that accelerating the incident management using chat GPT and open AI and logic app. So how you can you know orchestrate did work this workflows using service now or email or any of the uh, ticketing system uh, in that yeah. uh, scenario. So it could be anything. Uh, another okay. interesting in the same general. Sorry. Yeah, you're saying something. No, no, just go on. So another uh, interesting one is about uh, for the developers or uh, uh, 
kind of uh, you know uh, there are uh, many uh, many a times what happen is uh, we use this day of pipelines right the day of sex operations which happens the pipelines which get so it it creates a kind of tickets automatic auto tickets when it face or uh, it incurs some errors during the running of this pipelines and uh, and those so it creates a ticket in your uh, azure board okay azure day of so it, even there you can have this chat gpt because it's an internal stuff right it's an internal kind. yes okay we have to be cautious in that because sometimes the error uh, sometimes the error has uh, much you know some uh, critical de uh, details in it like the urls or something or keys Usernames. or something but that is very yeah. rare it's the way how you are uh, how, how you have written the pipelines or so so but in that case also when the tickets are created you can just pass the chat gpt and you get a first case resolution like what can be the possible uh, resolution for this or no so that could be uh, another stuff okay interesting um again so this is of course in addition with all the other use cases that chat gpt has itself uh, told us like the nlp task is to just um, help you perform some uh, sentiment analysis uh, entity recognition whatever that work and uh, whatever that means uh, language translation is basically I think you can feed it one language and it outputs in a different language. Is that how uh, straightforward it is? I haven't tried it yet, so um, maybe I will now. Customer service, you've already uh, just uh, talked about that. And then research and analysis. So it says that it I can assist you in conducting research and analysis by providing insights and recommendations. Um, again, so this is where uh, my question, I guess, goes back to what I asked earlier is like, how do you and there is also a good question in the chat about, I think, relevant to this also. It's like, how do you trust what ChatGPT is giving back to you? Um, because we just said that it is fed on the data that nobody knows wh where the data came from, who fed it. Um, so whatever solution or whatever uh, analysis, let's say, it provides us, how trustworthy it is, how, how much can I actually trust on this output? Okay. So as I said, you know, whatever the request or the ticket which is coming in, it is being built in a prompt, in a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a builded prompt, how you're sending that request to the APIs. Okay, you, of course you cannot trust it, but it is a kind of first aid. First aid is never uh, a solution for any of the problem, right? It is about, just about shortening the response time. So when you have a kind of uh, any of the uh, technical errors or any of the errors or any of the facing stuff and based on the data which is coming again and again, the response sometimes get filtered out, right? You, it, it's all depend upon the prompts you are using. Mm -hmm. So of course you cannot, the, even the response which you are giving in can be, uh, uh, you know, appended with saying that uh, it's a, it is coming from a bot. Okay. It's not something a human is commenting it's coming from a bot so this is one of the part of responsible ai when we talk about like who is actually responding to your ticket can be explicitly mentioned over there but right. in, in the same response you can clearly mention that uh, so and so our support team is looking into it and they will come back soon if the error is not being resolved but at the same place the customer or the user which is coming in with some query he will get a first hand something to do or something to check with so we have seen uh, you know in many a times like in 80 75 to 80 percent of cases the tickets are getting closed yeah right yeah because a lot of tickets are repetitive tasks and, and i yes. guess for a lot of other tickets you can just tell them for the interest of saving your sla i guess you can just give them the first response like okay i apologize for this problem you have and your engineers will be assigned to you so yes. at least you get that acknowledgement back as soon as you, uh, you yes. raise and meantime you can try out with this 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 so and so stuff right cool right. um so in addition to again uh, my my original question i tried to uh, throw some sarcasm at it this time so okay great so basically you're saying that you will be replacing some humans as so we can fire them right um <laughs> again so it gave me a very standardized politically correct answer um uh, again so it doesn't seem like uh, it, it understood my sarcasm there uh, but again um 
I guess again, it goes back to my question is like, does it have an instruction that says if you receive a question of this tone, then, you know, answer it politically correctly or don't don't give any uh, controversial uh, emotional answers? That could be because it never gives. Uh, even if you ask, it will say that it, uh, I'm a language model. I cannot give any I cannot, opinion yeah. of mine. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And if you. You know, uh, there are some sensitive uh, questions. If you ask them, it it blocks you if it comes three times. Oh, the same question. Uh, no, okay. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to name those uh, sensitive questions. But if at all, if you in, uh, give that as a particular part of your input text, it will block you after three instances. Yeah, okay. yeah, stuff like you know, like having to do with explosives and all that kind of stuff. So it will it will say, hey, you know, this is, I I have a set of rules. So you can actually read the set of rules. So uh, actually, all all the other language models also have like base rule sets that they need to live by, you know. And uh, these are applied to uh, to all of these as well. So uh, you know, then it will not give certain pieces of information or try to give certain pieces of information. Also, like provide uh, you, you know, you can ask like what's the the social security number of some year, but it won't give it to you. Even well, it probably doesn't have it, but even if it has it somewhere, it doesn't give it to you because this is like personal information. So yeah, it's trained so to I do were, that as well. If I were to ask it, uh, how can I, how do I make a bomb? Would it give me instructions to make a bomb? No, no, it uh, will actually give you the it. political answer. <laughs> and if you do that a few times, then you might get blocked indeed. Yes. It and report it to the FBI, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Who okay. knows? Who knows what's behind that, right? You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, so I uh, let's talk about some limitations. I guess we have been talking about some limitations already. Uh, we just talked about one. Is like it has, um, uh, it operates within a set of uh, predefined, let's say, constraints. Um, so you cannot ask it any um, medical advice, for example, right? So the first time I showed this to my dad, um, he was asking me, hey, what is this chat GPD that everything, everyone is talking about? It's, it's in the newspaper, it's in the news, it's everywhere. Um, yeah. Show me what this exactly is, right? So I showed him. Um, so this is what, this is a, a chat bot, so you can type your question here and it outputs the answers. And him being uh, a man of 60 plus age now, all the questions he has are medical. So he was asking, <laughs> what, is, uh, what does my high BP mean? Or what does, what is, what's the sugar? Uh, what is the good range for having your sugar? Um, diabetes, how will mm. I get diabetes? Or how do I prevent diabetes? Questions like that, right? Um, each time uh, it gave a very, uh, uh, let's say, a limited answer saying that I, it, it did start with the explanation of what diabetes is and how do people get it and a few things to avoid when you have a, you to you know um, when you have diabetes and so on but it always at the end it said if you have further questions i am no qualified doctor if you have further questions please go see your medical expert yeah. um so that again, I think is is very interesting that you can't ask it anything, and you again, like we previously said, you can't necessarily trust what it is because in the in the news I heard or I read um, about a guy who asked about how do I smuggle something from an airport, and Chat GPT gave gave it some like instructions like do this, and you'll be able to smuggle um, let's say gold or drugs from the airport. Um, again, I don't know how true that is because. If we are talking about the limitations, we would think that this is something that Chat GPT would not answer. Um, mm. But again, I well, don't know. you know, so basically, what what they are doing is also they are they are implementing new rules every time uh, because they they see also what people are asking, and they are they of course have you know like their own intelligence on top of it, you know, looking for oh yeah. Now people are not calling it a bomb, but now they are calling it an explosive. How can I create the explosive? You know, so and then they they will figure that out, you know, behind the scenes at uh, OpenAI and start filtering out those things. And that's actually what they said that they did. So every time they have a new iteration, they will add a few more things that, hey, you know, this is going into the wrong direction. 
you know, this is this is giving us problems and we will not allow it. However, what is interesting actually is that in the rules, it also says that you are not a doctor, you are not a lawyer either, but you are allowed to, to give some information. So not advice, but information, right? So like, okay, what is diabetes? It will, it will, it can tell you what diabetes is, but you know, it it can is not allowed to say, oh, but you have to do this or that. So that that is, let's say, there's a there's a boundary there, and the same goes for legal advice. So you can actually ask it to, okay, draft a contract for this or that, uh, you know, or uh, like a rent contract for my house, and uh, it needs to have this, that, and that information. It will actually create you a relatively good-looking legal document. However, you it's not a lawyer, so you do have to look at it yourself, uh, work on it, make some changes. Um, the funny thing is that they actually tested ChatGPT against like a lot of things, you know, like uh, Eng English language learning, but also like against the law bar, and it actually passed it. So yeah, it, <laughs> so it actually yeah. did, but it's still not allowed. You know, it's it's not a lawyer. Uh, that's that's the whole thing, but you can. Um, Tell it like today you are a lawyer and you are giving me advice and then these are my questions. So, you know, that's again framing ChatGPT in a, you know, certain environment and then saying, okay, now give me the answers in that way, which is different than what ChatGPT itself normally would, uh, would give you. And sometimes it might give you two answers in that case. Yes. Um, so again, if you see here the limitation that it says that it cannot do, uh, like it obviously does not have personal feelings, motivations, or beliefs. Uh, now I mm -hmm. I take that with a grain of salt because as the chat GPT itself may not have any personal feelings, motivation, or beliefs, but the people who fed it the data might. Um, so the output it gave, so it may they may have prioritized um, Trump is good over Trump is bad data. Let's say. So all the output that ChatGPT is giving me is based on the good image of Trump and not the, the negatives that he has done. Um, so the first one, I take it as, again, like, with a grain of salt. Uh, second, I cannot engage in physical actions. I mean, duh, um, that we, we get that much. Um, and I'm only capable of processing and generating text base. Uh, this yeah. uh, made me wonder, actually. So since ChatGPT cannot do that, is there a different tool from OpenAI that can do it? Kasim, do you do you know of such tool? Or if not from OpenAI, maybe some other organization. Sorry for what? Sorry, uh, for uh, generating images and audio content based on what your yeah, question is. Yeah, for generating is. images, OpenAI has uh, Dali. It create it generates based on what the input is coming in. It does as OpenAI has. There are many tools which uses okay. this model. Even Azure OpenAI does have those uh, Dali as a model. So. Okay. So yeah. you well, other the interesting tool, interesting tool from OpenAI other than Chat GPT, I feel is uh, AI uh, text classifier. Don't know how much how many people over here knows it. It is it is known as AI uh, text classifier. And uh, what it does it, whatever uh, if you give up input as a text, okay, it says whether it has been created by human or it is created by AI. It's a human oh, okay. generated content or it's an so many of the students when I give a talk to the colleges and all which uh, the students which uses uh, this uh, chat GPT for their assignment work. So I give them this good <laughs> news that there is a tool from uh, OpenAI again, which uh, you know, and uh, the professors and uh, the teachers are very much interested to use that particular uh, tool and that is also free as of now. So if you just copy okay. and paste the entire content, it will tell you whether it's an human generated or whether it's an AI generated. So that is another tool. <laughs> interesting. Which is an interesting. Tool, I wonder yeah. how that works because a lot of the <laughs> times, what uh, what a chat GPT uh, responds is exactly how I would write it if if I were to write it myself. So I would be uh, really interested as to how that works in the background. Yeah, so the results are three. One is human generated, AI generated, and third is mixed generation, human plus yeah. AI. So if you just tweak okay. your uh, tweak the response with your framing in your words. That too is being, and I have tested with a few texts, so I have got the right results as of now. Let's see. Okay. So it has only one limitation that it needs one thousand words to uh, 
oh, wow. have a proper data yeah so you can write okay. a small mail you can write a short article of 700 words that will not be get caught <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting okay um next so uh, again so uh, depending on what you or what words you use to ask it or even if you ask the same questions slightly differently i guess um you see that there is uh, similar but uh, more or less data that it generates as output right so these two yeah. questions are essentially the same what uh, what are some things you can't do and what you cannot do for me they are the same questions but you see that these responses are clearly different um so again so is this again going back to the same uh, chopping up the text and analyzing it and then going encoding and decoding and all this stuff so again how does it because i don't understand um how these two answers are different given the same question so do you do you have any answer for that uh not exactly but yes like if you again ask for the third time you will get some different answer yeah, yeah but the but the but the main like the uh sense behind all these and three answers would be same yeah that's it okay. so it's not it's not pulling it from a quote it's yeah. like building it at that moment yes so yeah yeah see because some of the things that the the whole things are different like so the first oh, yeah. one uh yeah so the first one saying i can't provide medical advice or diagnose medical conditions that does not say uh, it's not reflected in the first answer anyway yeah. no so it's it's basically see it's like uh, you know uh, if you keep on questioning him like give some more pointers give some more pointers it will keep giving you answers which are different from the earlier because it knows that it has already provided you those points so you it, the re next response should be something different from what it has already given you yeah okay so in that manner it keeps keeps changing interesting yeah all right um so acquisition by microsoft is again one of the big things that people are talking about open ai is being acquired by microsoft or has been acquired by microsoft for a certain billion amount i guess I don't know what it is um 10. 10 billion okay yeah this was announced this was announced <laughs> yeah so exactly it's a good start <laughs> <laughs> i was going to ask because there is no way that um, the acquisition or the talk started after chat gpt gained its traction right because i believe uh, personally think that microsoft has been interested in this for for much longer than it became public or it became famous because the uh, let's say they announced that they are acquiring um, uh, open ai today and after two days all the new uh, azure is now integrating with chat gpt and like um, microsoft 365 is now chat gpt and bing microsoft bing. bing is now chat gpt i was like there is no way that microsoft has developed um chat gpt integration for bing in two days um so there must be something going on in the background from a long time that we don't know about um but again what do you think of this acquisition by microsoft why, why do you think microsoft is interested in see i don't uh, know the exact business reasons behind this but yes what you said uh, i do agree like because if you see uh, we have a github go pi co pilot right which was yes. uh, introduced way i believe in 2020 2020 or 2021 2021 yeah, and it's end of yeah. 2021 yeah so what is uh, github co pilot it, it is just using the codex model of open ai uh, there's some uh, for generating the codes we have power functions which is a part of uh, low code power platforms and all which again if you write <clears throat> what workflows you need to uh, have you need to create it will just all create those workflows again that is based on this models now yesterday uh, i believe yesterday or today uh, microsoft announced that uh, now chat gpt is a part of azure open ai like if you have azure open ai playground with you there is an another tab which has been, they have added as chat gpt playground so now you can use the same ai models but uh, with your data like uh, you can feed all all your data but you can use that a uh, model which runs chat gpt into your application so it, they just uh, today uh, they have announced so it is not uh, again in, introducing or infusing all this 
uh, mature massive models it's not a part of one or two days so of course this is being happening from long time it is just uh, they must be waiting for the right time to announce so it was all chronological done first chat gpt got live to uh, open to public then this announcement came in the dali was introduced yeah. last year so yeah that's all it's yeah. all uh, very much uh, i think very well planned yeah. it is definitely microsoft it has is. been working on a lot of these uh, yeah. these things already for a few years um you know also for the graphics like the the connectivity with dolly with but putting it in a microsoft product you know those kind of things so it, there's there's already been a lot a lot going on and well microsoft has for many years already been a a, a big advocate of the uh, of the open source stuff such as a uh, open ai as well you know like hey there's there's there should be something here and uh, yeah working through a lot of data is already also one of those things but also like gaining sentiment like checking what the sentiment is of people writing something that's also already very uh, very important translations all that kind of stuff so and everything now comes back in here in these kind of tooling so it's uh, it's very interesting to microsoft as well absolutely and if you and if you read this answer, um, I quite like the answer, the, the, the way that it has answered it, because it has given us both sides. Um, yeah. It says, on one hand, Microsoft has long history of investment, so it could be good for OpenAI uh, to be acquired by Microsoft because they will put more investment and more efforts in it. But on the other hand, um, it is also possible that Microsoft may have its own agenda. Microsoft may have its own policies. It may have its own... Uh, privacy issues, right? Because we know Microsoft, Google, or any other companies for that matter are, you know, um, uh, getting a lot of, um, <laughs> Bob, you look uh, very interesting all of a sudden. Um, of course. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, so they, they these companies have been, they, they have accused of stealing personal data and using it for their own uh, agenda. Um, so I, I like the fact that ChatGPT has answered it or, or incorporated it. It's answered that okay, while this is a good thing, this may also be a bad thing. Um, well, not necessarily a bad thing, but people might ask. This may raise some question, uh, you know, questions, some concerns. So I do like uh, the unbiased answer here. Um, Cool. So let's move on to Google Bard versus ChatGPT. Now let's keep it very brief because I personally haven't tried Google Bard at all. I don't know if you have, Kasim. I you might have. Right now. No. Okay. Okay. So well, I asked it. Uh, okay. So we have another candidate again. Since we're interviewing, we we have multiple candidates for this position, and Google came in. <laughs> Bob, how did you do that? Is that the new metaverse for team yeah. thing? Okay. Yeah, avatars. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so it gave me again a, a fairly uh, balanced comparison between what Google Bard is and what ChatGPT is again. Um, for the same question, it did answer me differently um, in one of the other responses. it's it. I said Google Bard, but it took Google Bart, B-A-R-T which was an acronym for uh, bi-directional something something. Uh, and it gave me an, a comparison between what BART is and what ChatGPT is and how it is different. But again, it seems to be um, a very well-balanced answer there. Um, now, this is an interesting question mm -hmm. because there are uh, two streams, I guess, to these questions, two schools of thought. It's like chat GPT or it chat in, uh, versus search engines. Is it the same? Is one better than the other? And when do you use what? Kasim? Uh, yes. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can already uh, start saying something about this. So yeah. um, what is what has to be clear about especially ChatGPT is it is not connected to the internet, right? So it did the indexing in, I think it was 2021 and maybe the start of 2022, something like that. So it doesn't know about anything new, no news items, no, you know, nothing 
about the war or whatever. So it doesn't know anything about that. It does not have internet access either. So it cannot just go reach out to, you know, its favorite search engine and try and find out, uh, you know, some extra information and then feed it to you because it just can read faster, right? Um, so it's not connected to the internet. So it's not a search engine then either, right? Because it doesn't have the the latest or the current or the, let's say a a thousand or a million uh, results such as Google would uh, would give you if you type anything. Yeah. So so it's it's not a search engine as such. However, it did index a lot a lot of data. So yeah, it can give you something. But it's basically to write text, right? To write and read text and find sentiment, uh, uh, create, be creative, like create poems, create those kind of things. That is what it is very good at. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So ChatGPT, if you ask it a question, it is going to give you an answer. Now that answer could be right or wrong. Again, subject, depending on what kind of question that is. But what it is certainly not doing is it is not giving you any references. It is not giving you any further reading material. Uh, it is not giving you different perspectives um, of the same questions, right? So as Google would say, for example, so if I mm -hmm. type in Google today, um, uh, an example for PowerShell script, I'm getting a thousand different results. Um, you're getting thousand different results, but if you ask the same to chat GPT, it is just going to give you a couple of examples for at best. Um, so again, it is not indexed. It is, it's not connected to the internet, like you said. So it is not always up to date unless we keep it up to date, right? So um, it is, it is definitely not different, but having said that, um, I don't think again, well, it's not about uh, the future anymore. The Microsoft Bing powered by ChatGPT is already out. Well, kind of out, rolling out. Um, so it is not much of a either or question. It is much of a Google search, well, any search engine plus an AI chatbot, right? So it is going to be a combination of both these technologies. It's not, not a replacement of each other, basically. Right. Um, we Hi. need. To, yeah, can you hear us now, Kasa? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Very good. Um, so now let's move on to uh, very quickly talk about what the future of ChatGPT is. Um, in your opinion, Kasa, where do you think we are heading with this? <laughs> in a very simpler term, we are the futures because we are fitting in the data right now. So oh, what yeah. it's, <laughs> it's now improvising. Uh, the self models with what data we are uh, fitting in. So again, it uh, already it's it's just adding to the massive uh, data set it already had. And now earlier we don't know what was the thing, but now as it is being open to public, all the real time uh, you know uh, sentiments or real time sarcasms, everything. I believe uh, yeah, as of now, uh, ChatGPT is not able to recognize the sarcasm in the sentences. But eventually, it will start doing this based on the inputs which are coming in. And uh, if you if you notice uh, every uh, every output, it gives you an two icon of thumbs up and thumbs down. It's a kind of feedback yes. it is asking for. So yeah. many yeah. A time when, when the user gets it, response it was expecting, it just clicks on right, and sometimes it clicks on uh, the thumbs down that this is not the right answer. And based on that, it's a self self learning model is happening self learning mechanism is uh, going on right now so uh, you know that's that's the reason i you know i use this line that we are the future of chat gpt right now. so can i potentially feed it false data yes you can you see if uh, there was a meme if you remember uh, which got viral uh, when chat gpt was released about 2 plus 2 is 5 okay yeah <laughs> and you you see that conversation if you 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 yourself do that conversation, at last it it says that okay two plus two was five. Okay, yeah, if so you if pursue you want, it hard enough, yeah, yeah. Want to mold it with your data, false data, with uh, a continuous kind of anyway, it's learning, it's self learning, right? And it doesn't know whether the input which are coming in is right or wrong. It is just trying to uh, make the hit, uh, the model response much sharper and accurate. 
so mm-hmm. it does it has no uh, way to understand whether two or two is four or five it will depend on what input is coming in mm-hmm. okay so you think it will be connected to the internet i i don't think so they will uh, like i really don't think so they will make it as live then there was no use of feeding the live data if at all right. they wanted to connect it with internet okay because uh, the, this third that, point in uh, that is the only th- thin line difference between a search engine and what the language model is it's based upon the data which is being already feeded and the search engines are on all live searches right right because i asked that question specifically uh, from this this uh, this point number 3 here is the knowledge graph integration so uh, this is something that we see in google uh, google search engine today so if you type something like um, restaurants near me say for example it gives you all the restaurants that are near you so it does not necess- and it also pivots out let's do, uh, let's say so this is a restaurant this is the menu and this is a, a recommended dish and this is the price and so on and so on. so that is how you build a knowledge graph and these things are close by if you want to go sightseeing then from this hotel these things are nearby to you um mm. so for 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 an exa- for um chat gpt to give you such example or such output wouldn't it need uh, real time data of what's happening out in the world or wouldn't it be outdated by the time um so, you know see it's all linked in linked with the data it's already like if you put down what is your current location it may give you the right uh, results in the same manner because it's internally linked with all this coordinates and all right so it's mm. nothing that live things it will uh, uh, try to get your live location and then help you out with the same event mm. yes event yeah. can but i don't i don't see uh, uh, things going in that manner because then there will be a very uh, because i have seen uh, the days uh, the you know the how the models was being trained and how the things came in from 2018 to now till date what they are trying they are not trying to compete compete with any other existing systems but they are trying to build some unique uh, all the time okay so yeah. i don't think so this uh, they will go into uh, getting into a live search engine or something but they will try to make their model more and more accurate okay this is what my thought Okay. Do you have anything to say, Sabo? Uh, I'm. I think so. Well, we know that uh, that it's coming. You know, now it's combining with uh, with with Bing Search. However, it is two different tabs. Then, right? So there's one which is the search, and the other tab is going to be the chat. So it will give you information and 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 items. However, we don't know yet that it's going to be current items or that it actually did a search in the background and then pulled it in. Um, I can see at some point that it will want to do that or that it will want to make the search engine smarter. Because if you, like like I said, if you now search for something, you get like 100,000 or millions of results and you can only look at the first 10 anyway. Um, so, you know, you want it to be to become smarter so to have that indexing and to you know get get the the the, the most important things out um so there will i think there will be some kind of a combination but it'll take a while right so uh first gpt4 and 5 and who knows <laughs> where we go <laughs> yeah maybe in like next 2 or 3 years probably oh yeah could be okay um so lastly, let's talk about some of the criticisms, right? So if, if chat GPT is all that good, then why are people raising concerns about it? Uh, now right. we have um, uh, touched upon a lot of uh, points already, but um, some of the things that people are saying that the, the biggest thing, of course, is that it is going to eat up human jobs. Uh, it is going to create unemployment. It is going to replace humans. Now, uh, Chad GPT is going to give you a very politically correct answer. Is like, no, no, I'm not stealing your jobs. I'm only augmenting your capability to do a better job or whatever bullshit it is, right? <laughs> right? So we know um, it is uh, a very politically inspired answer. But in reality, I've, I've already seen some news that this CTO is, you know, replaced uh, 50 humans with ChatGPT, um, or this company is considering 
uh, firing you know 10 people to to get you know to use chat gpt instead so it is definitely going to replace jobs there is no ifs and buts about it <laughs> um what do you think uh, about that list? Like, what kinds of jobs are in danger? What, which ones are, you know, relatively safe for now? Let's say, my job is safe. Is my job safe? <laughs> no, I was awesome? saying that. I was saying that at the <laughs> moment you asked, like, which were, which is in trouble, but <laughs> yeah, no, so but uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's the whole thing, right? So I think some some items can be, yeah, can can be. Uh, uh, Replace well, replace is one thing you because you need to feed it an input first before you get an output, and then you need to check the output and verify that it's right or that it's usable and it needs to be changed. You know, same goes for coding. So, you get uh, if you ask it for some kind of a program code or maybe uh, to build a miniature game or whatever, you need to do like 20 iterations before you get what you wanted, and you know, yeah. you need to help it forward so it doesn't. It's it's not uh, it's not complete, and it's also you know not the source of full truth and those kind of things, right? So it's again, it's not a lawyer, not a doctor, not this, not that, um, but it can help you along the way, yeah. And that yeah. that you know, like sometimes, uh, especially like in the, in the Netherlands, we have something called Sinterklaas, where we make rhymes for for kids, and uh, man, it was like a headache every time, every year when we were young. <laughs> And now you could just say because what what rhymes with Bob, right? So those kind of things uh, you go like what? So you just yeah. now feed it, and then it'll generate something for you. So yeah, it'll augment it. And yeah, some people there there might be a few people you know who might have to move or adjust. Yeah, like always. Yeah, with with the rise of new technology, I guess that always happens. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you are doing a you know a very copy paste mechanical job, then I guess you're not using much of your skills or much of your human intelligence. So of course, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence is going to take over. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so we've already gone past our time limit, but this discussion has been really interesting. Um, so at the end, to to sum things up, I asked it. Sure, here's. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I yeah, I cut my question. Uh, well, the question I asked was so based on our discussion so far, can you give me a, a summary of what we discussed? Um, now I want I asked that question specifically because I wanted to demonstrate that ChatGPT can remember conversations. Um, so and it has the context of what we have been talking about so far. So depending on that, all my questions, its answers, my uh, counter questions, my comments and everything, it has given quite a nice uh, summary of all the discussions that we've had so far. And I think it is pretty much, um, let's say it is acceptable, right? So it is, um, we can pass it off as, okay, this is good answer. Um, you know, you are now hired for the position of uh, the ultimate chat, you know, ultimate chatbot for future. Um, but yeah, so this is just to demonstrate that yes, it does convert, it does remember conversation, and yes, it 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 gets the context. It may not get the right. emotional sentiments and analysis uh, yet, but again, like we discussed, it might in very very near future. Oh yeah. Um, do you have anything to say uh, before we wrap this up, Kasim? Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sorry, it's I'm facing some issues with Teams. I don't know what. No yeah. So, so to conclude, we can. Uh, I can. I just wanted to continue with uh, what about the question which came in about replacement of human. So mm -hmm. that only I I will take it as a conclusion that I what I personally think is uh, uh, as I said earlier about the prompt engineering, right? So rather than replacing the human, it will replace the skill sets of uh, the existing developers. Rather than uh, when the internet came in, the same cause was there, like whether it will uh, eat up the jobs, but that doesn't happen. It created more jobs. Uh, the people who are, you know, uh, skilled to use the internet, the same go, uh, had happened with Google. I have seen many of the resumes which says that I'm a good Googler. Like I know. <laughs> yeah. how to, but, yeah. And the same thing will happen like 
uh, the very soon there will be some skill sets coming that i am a prompt skilled prompt engineer or skilled prompt developer i know how to use chat gpt i know uh, the pair how to make a pair programming with chat gpt and get the things done more faster so yes that is what my thought is all about like uh, it will uh, it it's, there is a very less chance uh, to get it replaced but it will re- definitely help and you know it will create a new altogether new skill set so it's all depend how you are using chat gpt how you are thinking chat gpt will be so earlier also i made this statement if you rely on it you're gone but if you make a use of it you will be on your next level Oh, yes, Absolutely. I fully agree with that one, Kassam. That's a perfect statement uh, there. Yeah, yeah, so it's not about replacement. It's, again, more about how you use it. It's, uh, it's not replacing mm-hmm. humans. It is replacing some skills. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. as humans, you are responsible to upscale. You are responsible to, you know, properly use ChatGPT and not let yourself be replaced, I guess. That is uh, because you have to constantly improvise anyway in a job that you're supposed to do. Um, so it is, yes, it is going to take over a lot of chatbots, maybe uh, initial customer support, maybe in the future, down in the line, it may give you some, uh, if you call uh, customer care today, it probably goes out somewhere in India, but tomorrow, maybe it might go out to chat GPT. Uh, so a lot of people at call center may lose their jobs. Um, but having said that, they want to, they, they should be improving their skills at any way. Um, yeah. So it's not really replacing jobs; it is replacing some skills. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Um, that brings us to the end of this webinar for today. Very interesting. Um, if you, if we have been answering some questions on the fly, but are there any more mm-hmm. questions? Yeah, there just, are some uh, really good questions. If any of you have have questions, just type something or anything in the chat, and I can enable your voice. Uh, your yeah, I was going so to say maybe know. if if a question comes in, we'll we'll let ChatGPT answer. Why not? Cool. <laughs> Let's see if anything comes in. All right. I'm not seeing anybody typing, so uh, I guess yeah. we can. Uh, we can wrap up this uh, this webinar and feel free to to reach out to us you know to uh, if you have any questions or remarks or you know like uh, we are very open uh, to to hear from you and uh, and uh, and chat uh, about things chat gpt Absolutely. about things <laughs> <laughs> yeah good one oh someone's typing I think it's Neil's typing and someone else probably. All right. Uh, nice one, Bob. <laughs> that was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then uh, we will wrap up and uh, we will uh, close the webinar. Thank you all very much for attending. And uh, we will, uh, you know, cut the beginning and the end off and then uh, put the recording online. Uh, and you can also register for it if you want to receive a badge. And if you've made it so this far, then you will also receive a badge, uh, community badge uh, from us. So good luck. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Bye.